Sports Talk Chicago. Here with John's Glow. Appreciate all of you tuning in. Remember, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel at Sports Talk Chicago. Follow us all over at Sports Talk Chicago as well. And hit up our sponsor, Amish Country Farms. John Meadows here directing and producing. John's Glow here with you hosting. Big shout out to our great affiliates across the state of Illinois and state of Indiana. WJOB AM 1230. Cities 92.9 making our debut here Saturday evenings. Every Saturday evening. 6 to 7 p.m. And, of course, ACTV out in Aurora. Appreciate all of you tuning in. And, of course, you can always find us on YouTube. We are nearing the 20,000 subscriber mark. Everything will help. We would really appreciate your help as we kind of move in that direction. The Bears have a game tomorrow, don't they? Bears are going to be playing against Tampa in Tampa for really a make-or-break opportunity. No, I'm not sounding over dramatic. After the game last week, I think there are a lot of questions that need to be answered, and we're going to find out some answers to those on Sunday. Talked about this last week for a little bit on our program. Pretty serious question we have here. And something that I think was not discussed enough, but should be. Is Jordan Love better than Justin Fields? Now, some Bears fans may balk at that statement. What are you talking about? It's Justin Fields, John. Oh, Justin Fields is so good. He's such a highlight real player. Well, Jordan Love beat his ass. He beat the Bears' ass on Sunday. You can say what you want. It's the truth. And I don't even like saying it. I hate admitting it out loud, but it happened. There's nothing I can say to refute that statement. Justin Fields made more mistakes, turned the ball over more, which led to more points for the opposition. And the Bears' offense looked horrendous compared to what Jordan Love was doing. Now, you can blame that on scheme, but you can't blame the turnovers on scheme. You can blame them on Justin Fields himself. So now we come to this point where I think every week it's going to be a running joke, and not really a running joke, but kind of a concern. And I'm going to say this now as we preview this Bucs Bears game. What happens if Baker Mayfield wins? What what are we going to say? if Baker Mayfield outduels the Bears' defense and Justin Fields on Sunday. And I think that's where Bears fans are at. What is going to happen if Justin Fields loses to Baker Mayfield? It's a fair question. I don't want to know the answer if he does lose, because it's not good. This time last year, everybody was hyping up Justin Fields, and somewhat rightfully so. Highlight real plays. Tons of running. Team was competitive with him in the game. Remember, they won, started off the year, opening week, beat the Niners at home. There was a lot of hope and a lot of excitement, and if you criticized Fields, you were kind of cast out and thrown away. One year later, if you criticize Fields, you're popular and you're cool. We've been doing it for a long time. We've been cool before it was cool to be cool. (laughs) <laughs> we've been criticizing his performance and his play for a while. That's not because we're trying to disparage what he's done. He's done some great things, but there have been issues. There have been things that are problematic that need to be corrected that have still not been corrected. He struggles throwing the ball downfield. Now, whether that's because uh, play calling or because of his eyesight and his ability to get the ball down there, that's a question. He misses tons of open wide receivers, which we saw last week on the tape. And he's always in duck and run mode. And that's okay. That's okay if he is. But sometimes it's unnecessary. You don't need to be running all the time when there are people open downfield. You don't need to be scrambling 24-7 when you may have a receiver downfield open. Just doesn't make any sense there. These are issues that need to be corrected. Fields is in year three. If he doesn't do this by the end of the year, I say his butt is gone needs to go. And that's not because we're trying to be mean. It's not because we're trying to bring him down. It's because if you're ineffective, there's an opportunity for the Bears, if they play horribly again, to draft a new quarterback. The Bears passed last year on Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud. They passed on a decent quarterback class. That's okay. Ryan Poles believed in Justin Fields. Good choice. Fine. But... You're going to pass on another good quarterback class again if Fields just does what he does last year? If he doesn't get any better, if there's no progress, if this team is bad, can't do that again. And this might just be week two. 
But I say all that to make the point that if the Bears lose week two to the Bucks, I don't care if they're on the road or at home, to the Bucks and frickin' Baker Mayfield, we have a serious problem on our hands. The Bears should be expected to win. I'm going to give you my pick in a little bit. I don't think they will win, but they should be expected to win. There's no reason why. Why not? The Bucs are in turmoil themselves. Now, they beat Minnesota last week. That's because hint, hint, Kirk Cousins made mistakes. Kirk Cousins made three turnovers, turnovers, two fumbles, and a pick. And that led to Tampa Bay winning. Baker Mayfield made less mistakes. That's why they won. And I feel like it's going to be the same thing this week for Fields, for Mayfield, for the Bears, for the Bucs. I firmly believe that the team that makes less mistakes is going to win this game. Simple as that. And that even applied to last week, too. Jordan Love, three touchdowns, no picks, no fumbles. Justin Fields, pick six, fumble, which led to points. Bears lost. The team that makes less turnovers is going to win on Sunday. The quarterback that makes less mistakes overall is going to win on Sunday. I think the run game is going to be key, too, for the Bears, especially. They finally started to utilize Roshan Johnson fairly well last week. Will they do that this week? And how will the Buccaneers stack up in the run game? I still think the Bears overall on paper, talent-wise, have a better run game. Bears have three competent running backs who can easily all gain four yards per carry minimum. Khalil Herbert, Deontay Foreman, and Roshan Johnson. Roshan and even Herbert proved last week that they could catch the football, and Roshan's a great blocker, great pass catcher, and great runner. The run game is clearly in the Bears' favor if they utilize it to their advantage. The offensive line needs to be better. And the Bears' defensive line needs to be better, too. What happened to the pass rush last week? Yannick Ngakwe had the one sack and a one tackle per loss, and that was it! They barely even pressured Jordan Love. He had so much time to throw. For his first start in the NFL, it must have been a cakewalk for him. No pressure, no worries, barely any knockdowns even, let alone sacks. So much time with the pocket, look what it led to. Three touchdowns, no picks for him. Will the Bears pressure Baker Mayfield? Because historically speaking, I like Baker Mayfield, he's turnover prone. He really is. If you get to him enough, he will make a mistake. Multiple mistakes. (laughs) Won't just be one. He will make mistakes, and teams usually capitalize off them. Like Justin Fields, he's a losing quarterback with a losing record who's been around the block a little bit. After the Browns got rid of him, went around to Carolina and the Rams last year, and now is on Tampa Bay, frankly, fighting for a spot. I was talking to somebody about this today. You know, Baker, had he not played well last week, He could have already gotten benched. Not kidding. I mean, Kyle Trask, who now is a third-year quarterback who's never started a game in his life, is right behind waiting. There was a quarterback battle in camp in Tampa. Nothing is guaranteed to Baker. One start, he could be gone. I don't know how tight they're going to hold that leash. If the Bears beat up Baker Mayfield, we could see a new quarterback in the second half on Sunday. It's very possible. So Baker is on a game-by-game basis right now. Nothing's guaranteed. Nothing's promised to him. Nothing's on the table yet. Can the Bears get to him and break him? Can the Bears force him to throw four picks in a half? Can the defense come through, create some short yardage situations for the Bears' offense, and, and move forward and score? Take the pressure off Justin Fields a bit. Allow the offense to kind of do their thing and not have to worry about always playing catch up. It's a team effort. And the Bears are more than capable of winning on Sunday. They're more than capable of beating Tampa. Tampa lost Tom Brady. Tampa almost fired. Well, they did fire, actually. They fired Byron Leftwich, but, you know, now they have Todd Bowles still there. I mean, they've gone through change, Tampa. They've gone through significant change in the offseason. I mean, you go from Tom Brady to Baker Mayfield being your starting quarterback. The fact that they're 1-0 and is really a miracle for them at this point. Use that if you're the Bears' motivation. Break the Buccaneers. That should be the theme for this week. Pretty catchy. Break the Buccaneers. Break the Bucs. That should be the theme. That's what they should be doing. That's what they should be focusing on because they could do it. Any team could do it. And this is not supposed to be disrespectful to Tampa. 
I mean, they won fair and square last week over Minnesota, which goes to show you how strong they are, which we predicted way back in the offseason in May and June. We knew Minnesota was going to be vulnerable. And now we sit here today with this opportunity and this situation. You have a chance, if you're the Bears, to really come back from the Packers debacle and make a significant statement. Because I'll tell you what, some people may be still hesitant if the Bears go one and one and they beat Tampa and they dominate. But you know what? That's a big deal. Coming off a horrible week, a tough loss. How do they respond? How do they move forward? Because Tampa won too. Somebody has to lose this weekend. And if it's not the Bears, that's a statement win. That's an exciting win. That's a win that could help them right the ship and move forward. But if they lose and they start 0-2, And they start 0-2, losing to Green Bay with a brand-new quarterback and Tampa with a brand-new quarterback, two teams with quarterback instabilities, two teams who, before the year began, really had no idea what their identity would be. If they lose, we have a significant problem on our hands. We really do. You lose to two teams who essentially have two backup quarterbacks starting, because they don't know what their quarterback situation is and you lose? (laughs) My goodness. Talk about a disappointment. It's really bad. And I won't accept it. My final score prediction, though, because I don't believe in this team at all, and the Bears have to prove to me and have to show me that I'm allowed to believe in them again, Bears are going to lose 17-14. I picked 17 14 Bears lose on Sunday. It's going to be a low scoring game, I think. I don't think it's going to be a slugfest. Because Baker, as good as he did last week, they only put up 20 points. They barely won, and that's just because they made less mistakes. And the Bears put up 20, but really it was 13 or 14. The last touchdown was in garbage time. <clears throat> this is going to be a low scoring game. This is going to be. Who makes less mistakes wins. This is going to be a situation where the run games for both teams are going to be tested and also the pass rushes for both teams. How does the Bears' offensive line do? Can they defend Justin Fields better? Will the Bears' defensive line actually make a play on Baker Mayfield? Will they cause enough pressure at least to force him to throw interceptions and make mistakes, which he's capable of doing? Will Justin Fields hold on to the ball more? And will the Bears outright win and silence some critics, including myself? A lot is riding on this game. There's a lot to be concerned about here. I don't think I'm overreacting. Oh, John, it's only game two. You know what? After how last week went, if it goes like this again, and this is Justin Fields' third year, and the Bears spent all this money in the offseason, and they lose to Baker Mayfield, who had no team and no interest as early as February, we have a problem. They can't lose. And if they do, you're going to hear me talk about and bash them. They deserve it. You cannot lose to Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You just can't. And if you do, we get a big problem. We get a huge problem on our hands. This will have ramifications for the rest of the season at this point. You cannot lose. I can't say it enough. You cannot lose. Losing this game is unbelievably bad. I'm very concerned. I have a right to be concerned, and I really hope the best for them. But I don't see them winning. I think it's going to be a 17-14 loss. Have to remember, too, that you could tune in with us on YouTube Sundays. We do the game broadcast live. So come to Sports Talk Chicago, tune in with us, and hang out with us as we watch what could be a very tough Bears game 